Hi, it's John. I'm going to be driving home for the next uh, 40 minutes, so let's drive. I'd like to take you on a journey with me and have a chat as we go. So where do I begin? <laughs> I'd love to give you an update on some of the amazing adventures that I've been on. And yeah, talk a bit about uh, what's coming up next. So where do I start? Well, first of all, I'm going to focus on my driving because that comes, comes first and stop looking at myself on the phone. Uh, check my routes. Yeah, I'm going right here. So yeah, where do I where do I begin? I would like to share a bit about some of the camping trips I've done recently. So you saw this week, I released a video where we'd been camping down at the the seaside, down at um, St Abbs Head, which is just in the Scottish Borders, and it's a really really beautiful location. You. It's also the location of where the um, some of the Thor scenes from the Marvel movies were were filmed, and I can see why. It's like this really beautiful little little Scottish town, and it has this uh, just off the side of it, it has this really cool little harbour, um, and the harbour still has quite a lot of fishing that goes on there, and it's just like a time capsule. Like when you go there, my wife was saying it's like you're just you're just in a different um, different dimension. The, the the parking where you can you can camp for the night. They don't offer you anything. They don't give you like electricity or, or water or anything. And you pay fifteen pounds, and you can stay right down at the sea. And <laughs> stay right down at the sea. The when we turned up, the the, the tide was high, and the the waves were just like splashing against the, the side of the van like they're just hitting the back of the the van doors and that was really really cool um we had an incredible stay there i just felt so so relaxed we 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 didn't have great internet which was also a blessing because it meant that we didn't really put the uh the tv on much then we watched a little bit of youtube which often survives uh like low bandwidth and my wife was reading, I was on my phone doing some editing and comments and to wake up in the morning, I remember about four or five in the morning the waves were, were splashing against the side of the van. Um, it just like hit a sea wall and then it would just the waves would go up over the, the wall and just like kiss the side of the van, like it wasn't scary at all. But it was enough to like wake you up, and you, I'm not really used to to that experience. And I, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that that closeness. And there's a little video which I posted separately on um, Instagram of just me opening up the back the back window and seeing the just opening the blind and seeing the sea and the sunrise, which was just spectacular. And I felt so close. I, I meditated at that in that moment, and I, I wrote the the lyrics to the song. And it was called in between the, the ebb and ebb and flow of of the waves, and it was it it was a really rhythmic and hypnotic time sleeping right down at the sea. Even even in my childhood, I did a lot of sailing, many many years of sailing and, and staying overnight in, in small boats and like little little yachts that would sleep maybe four people, and. In fact, it was much it was much harder than than the luxury of the, the camper van we have on land. But it was even then you wouldn't really sleep next to the the shore because your boat would be like hitting um, everything. <laughs> so uh, it it's safer to be on the shore and and have the waves, you know, some gentle waves hitting you just a little bit. Yeah, I really enjoyed that closeness and just that really beautiful message of like the in-between, the in-between is showing me that there's this build, this build of energy. So as the waves like form their crest, like the white crest, and then they, they, they break, the energy is released. And then the next wave is, being, is, is building up with that really beautiful um, like preparation for, for flow. I'm sure there's like lots of special 
terms in waves <laughs> uh, for, for, for this, but yeah, that, that rise of, of the wave is how I feel now. Like I feel like I'm, I'm going through this, this rise and that it's, it's, it's the most exciting time in many respects because I don't know what the wave's going to look like. I have a sense of this ever increasing energy in me building, you know, more capabilities, more abilities and, and, and greater depth to what I have already. And the message was also, cause I was feeling quite frustrated. I just coming out of this like break, this kind of deep rest and then this healing journey. And I'm, there is still healing. I'm, I'm continuing through. I'm still giving my, my time, my, my energy and um, my balance, like more self-care and, and, and rest than I, than I likely will um, at medium and longer term. But in the short term, for instance, so I'm doing less or no like energy healings. Just I've, I've done one since, I've one very short one since, uh, since my break. And that was incredibly beautiful. Yeah, it, it felt incredibly deep. I'd never been that far deep before in, in a in a client session. The yeah, so all this coming back to the building of the wave and and feeling that to never be frustrated. Well, there's no there's no should. Like I can't I can't say don't feel this and don't feel that. Whether it's to you or whether it's to myself more that it's okay to feel frustrated but equally know that the wave is building and that it's when the wave is built and breaks and releases it is just this going to be this incredible glorious um, release of energy and by that i mean in my life like in my physical reality you know the a lot of the investment of these these energies um going somewhere you know manifesting into, into, into fruition um, and I, I also wanted to reflect a little bit on a you know more kind of con controversial or more kind of raw video for me which I posted yesterday about uh, my, my YouTube journey and I wanted to be specific about it I wanted to be specific about YouTube and me writing 2170 I don't know, I did two this morning, we're about 79 once I upload those uh, those songs, like over 2,100. And you know, hundreds of daily meditation messages and and to share the, excuse me, oh dear. I'm sorry, that um, <laughs> There wasn't a lot I could do with that. Uh, and it's funny that I sneeze at that moment, right? Like, why is that, that happening right now? And there's, there's significance significance in everything and yeah I, I just felt like it was really important for me to share my truth of my journey like I want I want to look back at that time because um, a dear friend commented and said oh is is you know 40 pound what you you earn in a month and I said no it's what I've earned in a year uh, and only for two years and over a five-year journey and I, and that's just specifically from the YouTube revenue. So that's YouTube advert revenue, um, and what you know what comes in plus some some donations, some small donations. But it's all I'm grateful for all of it. Like, and don't get me wrong, like I, I, it warms my heart when I receive some energy back. It's also dwarfed by the love that I receive, and. I I feel in in my life and in many people's lives, you know, we, a lot of us went through this through the pandemic. Is that we realize that the that money is much less valuable than than time with your family, time with your loved ones. It's less valuable than your freedom. Mm. It's less valuable than your happiness, than your mental health, and your ability to have fun and create. Like money is this kind of it should never be seen as something that's that's more important than those. And so if you said, you know, if you said to me five years ago, hey John, you're gonna earn no money from YouTube, 
but you're going to meet some incredible souls who are going to help change your life. Uh, you know, like, for instance, um, Shane and the Unbiased and On the Fence tribe, you know, people that resonate with his channel that, that I met up with in, in 2019 um, over in Portland. Um, like, that was just a game changer for me, just such a different um, uh, change in my life. I've met uh, several YouTubers now, people that I met on, online um, in different countries. Uh, I met a couple of people in Canada, one in Toronto and one over at Vancouver. And it is like, it's incredible meeting them because those, those moments still resonate in my heart. They, they, the encounters that I had with them, both energetically and just meeting them physically, and the, and the moments we shared were, were incredible. And I've also met, you know, two people that I've met back in 2019 have, have since passed on and, and they're still in touch. So that's been incredibly beautiful. So yeah, I, I never want to feel ungrateful, but I, I felt it was really important to, to share like that direct energy exchange. Like if, if I, if I look at the energy that I put into YouTube and what I receive directly back from YouTube, like as a, as a corporation, as part of Google, um, and Alphabet, it's like, that is, that is the, the give and receive from, from those, those perspectives. And I feel like that's changing and, and will change. And I know that that part of my, my income will significantly change as this wave builds. And I also don't, I don't feel like I'm going to significantly change what I'm doing to make that happen, which is really funny, right? It's like, uh, as a human, we're always looking for like, what's the next thing that we would do that's different that would allow us to, you know, achieve the next, the next stage. And I'm being drawn more and more to so for instance if i want you know more subscribers more viewers more likes uh you know the uh more uh money coming through directly from from youtube those kind of traditional old world measures um are they're not like they're not a direct reflection of how good my music is or how good my content is, but I do resonate with this journey, which is which is drawing me now to greater explora exploration. And in that exploration, uh, I feel like there's a there's a deepening of of the work that I'm doing. And as I took that rest and came came back with with the song Lost Ship, which took over two weeks to to create, I experience a depth I'd never really experienced in a, in a song and also like some of the technical capabilities that I'd never experienced like I'd never never created a song like that before and now I've been drawn more into exploring with um, improvisation live songs and also doing uh, improvised like channeled light language and, and, and broader variations of light language. Like today I was doing some, just a little bit of, of dragon light language, which has been most dominant for me. Um, I, I shifted more into to avian light language, like uh, bird-like light language. And what I find really exciting is um, there's some, some beautiful souls on Instagram and YouTube that I've, I've been, been following and they're, they've come into my life and they're showing me how happy they are, like living in their, like their, their, their highest version of themselves doing kind of mixtures of, um, channeled and, uh, light language and healing music vocally. It is very challenging. I find it mentally very challenging in that. I'm breaking through many old patterns, including patterns that I've built myself. You know, after a couple of thousand songs, 
course you, you end up creating you, know, you can hear the patterns in my music and the patterns in my my lyrics um and i, I won't draw the, draw your attention to them because they'll probably just annoy you <laughs> sometimes they annoy me and sometimes i celebrate them i celebrate those patterns and i feel like and, and today i did what were the first i did today i did I might have done this before, but it's certainly very new to me. It's a, a, a light language a cappella song. I did a second song, which was light language, with a high range and then low, like kind of uh, humming and uh, arm sounds at the same time, so as to contrast. And then I also uh, went outside and uh, like cuddled up to this giant, um, uh, it's like a bush. I mean, it's taller than many trees, uh, and and sang some light language just using this little microphone, and that was really really beautiful. Like I wanted to experience what it'd be like trying uh, trying to create this music in, in nature, and I was watching Margot Free Music. She's on she's on Instagram, and in fact, I booked a session with her, which I'm really excited about. Um, investing in myself and, and my, my next adventure and what what I found really amazing was that she she does she was doing things like tuning into into nature like tuning into the energetic field around her tuning into you know the the nature the plants the trees like when and when you see her her interacting with the energy around her she is like a tune, like an, an, a tuning to to what's there, and I really love that because I I have this 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 balance to achieve with my studio, which is the studio is incredible at like I, isolating like its benefit and its weakness. Right, it it isolates sound, it isolates you physically. I can record music whenever I want. I can control everything that's in it, uh, but it's also really fascinating that it has, as a result, has very little in it. You know, there's no nature. There's no like a plant would not survive in there. Um, it has no um, you know nature sounds or and the energies. There's, there's also a kind of a blocking effect to the 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 energy as well. Um, like it's difficult to get Wi-Fi through the thick walls, etc. So anyway, you get the idea that it's a, a room within a room. It is an is isolated place. Um, and I'm encouraged more and more by my guides to, to get out and about and get out into nature and record, especially while it's warm. And I, I can't believe how good this little microphone is. What, what I love about it is that it is so, so flexible. So even though I'm driving, it, it's still picking up my voice well. And, and I love the flexibility of it. Like it, I can take that anywhere. It's so tiny, it's so light, and it's really cheap. And <laughs> so I also don't worry so much like, if it broke, I could I could buy another. And so I was shown um, that what I'm driving back from was I was dropping off my daughter. She's just got a new job, working at a like a local um, supermarket chain. And she is uh, she was in two days for training. And uh, what was really cool is she. We, when we were waiting, she, we were sat outside um, just for her, her training to start. And I was looking at this this travel agent's window and you know, the way that these travel agents often show themselves are they're trying to get the audience, get the customer to think about what it would be like for you to go on holiday to all these different places, like showing you a world of opportunity. There's like bright colors, there's like these landmarks that they show to get you feeling and thinking about the like what would it what would the, the vibration the frequency the feelings the emotions be like if you were there in that location and putting them all in front of you and so my guides were chatting with me and they said so john you you should try this um go you know do do this on video right like so i so what i i was asked to do is look at a map uh, pick a place so I, you know I could pick let's say 
um, the the pyramids of, of Giza in in Egypt. So so look at those, and then and then connect in with it, like in meditation, like in a meditation state, like astral project myself into that location, and then start channeling music, like either either song, white language, or a mix. And I do it with intention. And it might be, the intention might be, I might say out loud something like, what messages, like to sing the message of today or to express the vibration and the frequency of that location into song right now. Or maybe I change it in time and say, I want to travel back in time, through space and time to 10,000 years ago or, or whatever it is. Uh, and, and then my guides are saying, of course, once you've done that, John, you can then do that live, like get people to tell you where they'd like you to do that for. So it would be, I was, I was shown like, do it, do it for the home first. And I don't, I don't need to know exactly where someone lives, but maybe their town or their, their nearby city or something, uh, or nearby landmark that they, that they visit and then, and then create music and like channel, channel a song for that. That, that's really exciting. And they're showing me that's what I could be doing in the studio. I could be traveling the universe, doing this. I'm just gonna get a little drink of Diet Coke. Other much more healthier drinks are available. And this kind of brings me up closer to what my guides were saying. So after that, and I'm definitely gonna do that. It sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, was to, they were also showing me, me doing like sound healing in groups. So I would do like sound healing for people in a room, like a, let's say there's 10 people in a room, a room, maybe they're sat down, they might be sat on yoga mats or, or similar. And then I would, they were showing me like this interaction I'd have with each person. So it's very intentional and consensual. So they would, I would ask them permission to connect with their energy and not, not as deep as I go in with my like one-to-one -one healing sessions where I'm going like right into people's chakras more. It's more like working with their aura and their energy that's around them. And then I could also like reach in to their, to their light body and help with like a general like cleanse, not not specific. And what was really beautiful was I was seeing these people, I was seeing myself doing it in my corporate job, uh, like in a lunch session, like offering it to people. And then people would sit forwards, like they'd come forwards and they'd want, they'd be asking for their, like their chest and their, uh, their upper body in particular, where they're, they're holding a lot of stress to be released in, in that session. And they couldn't describe it. Like it doesn't like, maybe other people have other names for that. Like, you know, energy clearing, cleansing, aura cleansing, sound healing, um, you know, the, li the list goes on. But until, until I do it myself, I don't know what, what it would, what it would be like. And, but I, I know how to do it. And so, yeah, that seems really cool that I could sit down in front of them. I may or may not be playing a little bit guitar. I might have that next to me. Uh, I'm using a sound bowl for sure, or both. And I'd be using my, my energy healing uh, abilities and really clearing out someone's, someone's, someone's aura. And I can imagine these people wanting to keep doing it like they would they're almost like be really stressed and then be telling each other i don't really understand it i can't explain it but when john does that that energy healing i just i feel so much better and yeah that's that sounds really exciting and I, you know i'm totally honest i'm a bit scared of doing it like i i, I find bringing these um aspects of my abilities that don't have, that aren't, you know, 
either understood or accepted or even have a term um, in, in that kind of Western society, bringing them into a very Western company. Um, but actually, generally quite open-minded people, and I must remember that, like all these people I work with are, are often very open-minded. But um, like they do yoga sessions like a lot, and there there has there have been some meditations on and off by some people. So yeah, that that was really cool. And then I wanted to talk for a little bit about spirit guides and talking to our spirit guides because that's also changed for me. I, there's definitely been a leveling up in my communication with my spirit guides and I describe them now as being a group of friends that I can choose to consult with and they're they're much they're more outspoken now as well they'll also talk to me when I'm not like actively like I'm not in that moment verbally asking and as I say that in that moment because imagine a conversation with a, with a physical friend like if you said if you maybe um, went to their house or you, or you messaged them and you said I I am searching for this next like activation within me please tell me what it is that I should do next to assist with that activation and I and then I'd leave it with them it's almost like posting a letter to them I'd leave it with them and then they'd come back to me and some sometimes you get response there and then sometimes you get like a sense of when it's going to be so i asked that same question yesterday and they said oh you're you're going to get it over five nights and you're not necessarily going to remember in each dream exactly what happened but you're going to get that you're going to get that and you're going to receive it uh so that was really cool and I, like for me, the experience of, of having spirit guides, of talking to them, I feel that like everyone has spirit guides if they, if they choose to, to talk to them. And, you know, it's, it's, up, it's up to, to every individual. And, and, and some of us will describe the interactions that we have with our spirit guides as being our intuition or being our heart or our mind there's no right or wrong to this, right? Everyone, everyone is different and that's what's so beautiful. The experience that I, I've been having more recently is being, there being more like deeper connection. So there has been a shift like in, in my spirit team. So, so since I went through my, my rest, my recovery, uh, and now I'm now I'm just like building back up to, to full and beyond the, the energy levels and balance that I had before. Uh, that during that time they said my my spirit team said, look, we're we're changing, like we're we're changing the order of of angels, like we're we're significantly swapping out. So if there's the eight or so key spirit guides, step forwards, they've been with me at least. You know, there had been two or three changes uh, over uh, over the last five years, but this is like a change that will result in just one spirit guide remaining, and so all the rest are are are, are changing now, and they're they're coming in s with strong energy, and yet there's still this like incremental disclosure, so. My my guide, this is the strongest voice. Has a she has a she's I know she's female. She has very. Uh, it's funny she's showing herself to me now, uh, like in my my third eye. She has very uh, purposeful and clear communication. Like when she when she talks to me in my daily meditation, it is like this and this, then that, then this. Like it is a very uh, clearly spoken voice a very clear energy which i i really love and it's a dream to work with right it's like oh great i can like clearly understand this guide and she i i feel like there's like the public speaking aspect of her that 
comes through into me when I, when I connect with her. And it's, it's calm and yet incredibly strong. You know, when someone speaks to you like this, there's this beautiful cadence and rhythm and it feels clear. And when someone's describing, you know, the flow of a waterfall and how every droplet falls in perfect orchestration, you, you believe it, <laughs> you know, it just, it feels good. It feels right. And it's a beautiful energy to receive. She hasn't um, named herself yet, but I'm just hearing immediately hear the name Eva, Eva, E-V-A, Eva. Uh, and I'm just thinking like it's flashing through my mind, all these different aspects of Eva's that I've, that I've heard in movies and in, and, and people and yeah she's she's describing herself as <laughs> it's funny how she's doing this now right like I just wanted to talk about how we talk to our spirit guides uh, and now I'm having a full, a full blown introduction um, but yeah she's she's saying she's part avian and part Palladian and that her name like avian and Eva like A and E there's there's significance to this there's meaning in, in her name and i always experience this with with myself and my clients that the the name is is so important like there's there's beauty in our names there's beauty in our spirit guides names for they are the keys the spirit guides names are the keys to frequency it's like a soul signature a soul dna that allows us to connect to each other uh, in, a, in a constant and repeatable manner. So just like, you know, if you met a stranger in the street and, you know, you wouldn't, you don't just go straight up to people and say, hi, my name's John, um, even though it's quite a common name. It, you're revealing a huge amount about yourself and you're, you know, people can start shouting at you down the street, you know, John, John. <laughs> and, um, and we know you, John, we know your name. Like, it, it's a thing, right? And it's the same with our spirit guides. Like, when, when we when we ask for their names, it is a, a huge privilege. So thank you, Eva. Um, she's just starting to, like, show me that her name will also evolve with time. That she likes when she's called, when I summon her, or summon the connection with her in different ways, that her name will, like, have, have varieties to it. And I've been shown water, I keep being shown water and the waterfall. And oh, and I'm hearing even even flow is one of my favorite Pearl Jam songs. Uh, and it like that um, that that flow is is really beautiful. One of the motorhome like camper van uh, like RV batteries that we have is like a battery system. It's it's called Eco Flow. And she was just showing me that as well. Like it's not just water energy; it's like electrical energy flowing through water. And yeah, I just I feel like normalizing is a funny term, right? But but allowing people to feel more accepting about talking with their spirit guides. If you if if a version of me ten years ago had heard these last few sentences about how. I can just constantly flip between, you know, those two realities of being human driving a car and, you know, doing it very cautiously and keep my concentration on that. But at the same time, talking with my spirit guides, I, I would be really amazed. That version of me would be like, oh, wow, John's like a medium or something. You like talk to spirit. And there is a definite aspect of mediumship with your, your spirit guides, like you are connecting uh, two very different vibrations and frequencies and it feels different when I talk to them and sometimes I wonder things like what about people that you know are are worried about their mental health or their sanity or they're losing their grip on reality um, or you know they're feeling lost and I that old version of me 10 years ago would see this this John now who quite confidently talks with his spirit guides uh, perhaps questioning some of that, thinking how sane 
is John how much of his reality does he have? Like, why is he filming himself doing this and then like putting it out on YouTube? And I think a lot of it is in that a lot of the confidence I have is that I I feel safe and secure talking with my guides, full stop. And then secondly, I feel safe that I understand, I can perceive the differences of the frequencies and dimensions that they exist in. So I know for sure they do not exist in this third dimension. Like absolutely, categorically, they're, they're not here. But I have the ability and my higher self and with my guides, like constant help, my constant uh, daily routines over years have developed this ability or redeveloped or relearn this from previous lifetimes or even from when I was a child to, to, to be that medium to create the bridge between like a, you know, a third dimension and fifth or sixth or seventh or even higher. And I feel like my guides will, they'll come down to meet me at my vibration. They'll come down as close as they can to like fifth and maybe sometimes even fourth dimension. Uh, especially in dream states and so that feels really good to me like I, I I see the difference clearly and I know also that if I want them to be quiet I uh, like to, to, to not chat because I one thing I experienced uh, just before my uh, I took a break and became much more clear to me it was like getting lost like losing losing John losing uh, if you spend too much time in spirit, you, you know, you, you get this false impression that it's somehow really, really cool, like to be in the light and be in these high vibrations all the time. But if you're not grounded, if you're not connected into, in, deeply into this reality, in, in, into the ground of Mother Earth, like your roots deep down, then you, I, I would experience um, symptoms like feeling quite dizzy, like my head would be, I'd feel quite lightheaded and, and quite fatigued with it. It wasn't a very nice sensation. Um, and I need to ground, like a real desire to ground and get those feet deep into the ground. Uh, today I've already grounded a couple of times. I'll probably do it after this long conversation and chat with spirit guides more as well. Today is also my rest day, so I won't be posting this video. I'm just recording it uh, because it helps kill some time for. Uh, for this journey um, and then I also found that if I was speaking to my spirit guides like too much if I was doing too much energy healing etc I wasn't grounded in this reality the things I love physically in this reality I'd find that I was like the, the John aspect of me like the personality the kind of quirky middle-aged man um, a sense of humor like that that tend to be like put to the side and although it's me still physically talking, like my personality would kind of move off to the side and I would be chat focused on channeling more and I'd become more the entities like my my guides often that I'm that I'm channeling. So it needs to be that right balance. And I, I really admire, like I love I love the people that are often I, when you see people who are very used to talking to their guides all the time, they'll quite often like purposefully uh, flip between those realities and or they'll sometimes they'll they'll even like prepare so they might do like a you know 30 minute youtube video where they've spent time focused on the chat with their guides taking loads of notes come out of that meditation like disconnected from it and then gone into like creating a video and then in that moment they would they would start to to talk um about all these kind of metaphysical things but they would be in their personality and so like hi it's john let me talk to you today so just like I do with my daily meditations I'm not talking to my guides really like not not purposefully during those meditation moments I've already done it and I'm just recalling from you know 30 minutes ago or so uh, what what meditation message I'd, I'd received um, that's been really cool I really really enjoyed this chat thank you I'm almost home so yeah to recap uh, lots of exciting adventures coming. Um, I'm very open to, uh, to to receiving more, you know, love, support, um, money from these things that I've been investing in 
uh, like music and, and meditation. I've been posting daily for, for years now. Like I, I'm open to receiving and I'm repeating this mantra uh, to receive what's, what's due for me. Um, and I also a special shout out to, um, uh, to, to a dear friend, Mark, who, who gave me a beautiful donation. Um, it was really, really kind. And he was very purposeful in the reason for the donation, which I always do when I donate to people. And I really love that. I really appreciate it because he was saying specifically for my music and my, my daily meditations, because I do lots of other things. And I just really love that. Oh, look, I've got a halo. Um, and so, yeah, if, if you're donating, uh, yeah, why not say specifically what it's for? Um, like what, what is the purpose? Uh, it really, really, really helps me. Um, got some sparkles too, yay. <laughs> Wow, it's going to be a beautiful sunny day today. And what else? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what else to share. Yeah, just just to recap, um, you know, keep, keep keep going. Keep up your your daily practices. Keep going with your your meditations and your you know your psychic protection. And go out and have fun in the world. Like I'm going to do some skateboarding today, and I would take my dog out just now and take my skateboard. That's so much fun. Um, even though everyone looks at a middle-aged guy with gray hair and often like a, a gray uh, um, cardigan like this, I'll be out with a skateboard with my dog and it's, it's just a lot of fun trying not to fall over and, and going quite fast. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy this. Hope you enjoy my latest album that's out. Hope you enjoy all the songs that are coming up. And I must remember to try out this, uh, I'm going to do it tomorrow because today is like a rest day, but tomorrow I'm going to do some astral projection and channeling music. That'll be super fun. Okay, sending my love from Scotland. Love you.